So today we are going to solve few questions from isomerism from P1 and uh, P2 as well because I know most of the students they have uh, they face some problem solving these questions so I thought maybe I just solve few of them and I will try to explain them in detail right now this first question is related to isomerism in esters the question says that how many isomeric esters have the molecular formula C4H8O2 options are 2, 3, 4 and 5 so we have to draw the isomers of uh, C4H8O2 and the functional group must be ester they must all belong to esters now we know this thing that the functional group of esters is C double bond O right any, ester, any ester it must have this group present in it if a compound is ester it must have this group present in it alright so this is the functional group this is the functional group of ester C double bond O single bond O right now as you can see that carbon is making three bonds in this part so that means we can attach one group on this side and with this side to the oxygen in the smallest esters the smallest esters has one hydrogen attached on this side with this carbonyl group this carbonyl group is attached to a hydrogen atom so this is the smallest ester so we, so we start with the smallest ester right we place only one hydrogen with the carbonyl group this is carbonyl group so we only attach one hydrogen this is the smallest ester rest of the carbons uh, one of the carbon is already present in the uh, functional group so that means we only, now we have to draw only three other uh, three more carbon atoms so the three carbon atoms would be attached to this oxygen so CH2 CH2 CH3 so now this is one ester we have drawn the uh, one uh, structure of C4H8O2 you can just simply count the carbon hydrogen and oxygen this would become C4H8O2 now another structure as you can see that uh, in this structure the oxygen which, which is attached to the carbon let's just number the carbon atom so let's just suppose this is oxygen and the oxygen uh, the carbon which is connected to oxygen if it is carbon number one then it will be carbon number two and this is carbon number three so right now in this structure oxygen is attached to carbon number one right oxygen is attached to carbon number one and what if we attach oxygen to carbon number two this would be a structural change right whenever the functional group is attached to a different carbon atom that means this is a new structure so in this structure oxygen is attached to carbon number one and we know this thing that we can attach oxygen to carbon number two so let's just draw this other structure everything remains the same C double bond O O this is the functional group the smallest ester has only one hydrogen attached to this side to the left hand side and the right hand side there will be a change in the right hand side and this time oxygen will be connected to the carbon number two right let's suppose this is CH2 CH3 and I have done a mistake here this will be CH3 I've drawn carbon number one on the top you can draw it uh, you can draw it above or below it doesn't matter but this time oxygen is attached to carbon number two if we number the carbon atoms so if this is carbon number one this would be carbon number two or this would be carbon number three and you can start your numbering from this side as well this is one two or three so uh, it doesn't matter from where you're starting your numbering but the thing which matters is that structure is now changed I'm not going into the naming of Easter's because this is some other thing I'm uh, and I hope that all of you knows uh, how to name Easter's obviously this this type of Easter's they are not part of our syllabus that how to name uh, this kind of Easter's which have a branch present on them so I'm not naming the Easter's now this is second structure so that means uh, we can draw two structures now what if uh, we shift one of the carbon atom from because there are no structural changes there are no more structural changes keeping three hydrogen atoms on the right hand side so what if we shift one of the carbon atom from this side to this side right now we are jumping into other easters so let's suppose what if we have two carbon present on the left hand side 
one carbon is already present in the functional group C double bond O single bond O and in the previous structure we have hydrogen present on the left hand side now we attach a carbon so CH3 so how many carbons left on the right hand side only two so this would be CH2 CH3 and this is again C4 H8 O2 right so three structures now can we draw another structure yes what if we shift one more carbon from left from uh, right hand side to the left hand side because we cannot uh, do any structural changes keeping two carbon atoms here there are no more uh, positional isomers in this structure so we shift one carbon from this side from the right hand side to the left hand side right so let's draw the one more isomer so this is functional group now there are two carbons on the left hand side CH2 CH3 and only one carbon remains on the right hand side and this is again C4H8 O2 so now there are total four isomers can we draw another isomer and I hope this thing uh, everyone knows this thing that uh, you can you must have one carbon attached to this oxygen right if you want to draw an ester you must have one carbon at least you have one carbon attached to this oxygen right otherwise this would not be an ester so for uh, to draw an ester you must have one uh, carbon atom attached to this oxygen so that means this is it we can only draw four isomers of C4H8 O2 so the answer would be C all right so the next question is sorbitol is a naturally occurring compound with a sweet taste it is often used as a substitute for sucrose by the food industry so they have given us the structure of sorbitol and the question is that how many chiral centers how many chiral centers are present in sorbitol now chiral center if we talk about chiral center that what is a chiral center so the easiest definition of a chiral center is that which lacks plane of symmetry right so which lack plane of symmetry uh, unsymmetrical structure right and the easiest way to identify a chiral center is that it will be attached to four different groups it will be attached to four different groups right so a carbon which is attached to four different group is called a chiral carbon because carbon can make four bonds right in our organic compounds carbon is that atom which can make four different bonds so that means carbon could be a carbon which is attached to four different groups it would be a chiral center so we just have to identify those carbons which are attached to four different groups all right so let's just number our carbon atoms we have this carbon number one carbon number two carbon number three carbon number four carbon number five and carbon number six so we have six carbon atoms present in our structure so if you look at carbon number one and carbon number six immediately you will sort it out that they are not the chiral centers because both carbon number one and carbon number six they are attached to two hydrogen atoms right and the definition for a chiral carbon is that it will be attached to four different groups so carbon number one is attached to two hydrogens carbon number six is again attached to two hydrogens so that means uh, six is not the option so it would be either four or three either a or b right so let's just now look at the other carbon atoms so if we look at this carbon carbon number two so carbon number two is attached to hydrogen on one side oh on the other side and this ch2 oh at the top and this four carbon atoms at the bottom so that means this carbon is second carbon is chiral carbon because it is it is attached to four different groups right so carbon number two is chiral let's just erase these things now let's just find out about carbon number two so carbon number three sorry carbon number three carbon number three 
on one side it has hydrogen on the other side it has OH group on the top it has C2 H3 OH bracket 2 and then on the bottom side we have three carbon atoms again this is a chiral center right four different groups all right what about carbon number four so carbon number two carbon number three they both are chiral centers carbon number four is it is attached to H OH and if you look at top we have three carbon atoms at the bottom there are two carbon atoms again this is a chiral center so carbon number four is also chiral because it is also attached to four different groups and carbon number five is also chiral because it is also attached to four different groups right these are four different groups so that means we have four chiral centers present in this structure that means answer is B all right so the next question is which compound shows optical isomerism right so we have four different compounds and we have to identify that which of them would show optical isomerism but before identifying which of them shows optical isomerism let's just define what is optical isomers so if any of you have any query regarding optical isomerism i will solve it here so optical isomers are basically those compounds which rotate the plane polarized light in opposite direction right their molecular formula is same their structural formula is same the only difference is that they rotate the plane polarized light in opposite direction and the reason is the uh, orientation of atoms in a space atoms are differently oriented in space the reason is we talk about reason that why they rotate the plane polarized light in opposite direction so the reason is that atoms are differently oriented in space atoms are differently oriented in space right so their molecular formula is same structural formula is same but the atoms are differently oriented in space and due to that different uh, orientations of atom uh, they rotate the plane polarized light in opposite direction now how to identify whether a compound is optically active or it would have optical isomers or not uh, if the compound has chiral centers present in it if the compound lacks plane of symmetry that means it would be optical optically active and it would have optical isomers right so we just have to find out that which one of these options lacks plane of symmetry which one has a chiral center which one has a chiral carbon present in it a carbon which is attached to four different groups right so let's just draw the first structure which is 2 chloropropane in this question you will also learn that how to draw the structures from their name so in the structure they're saying that 2 chloropropane so let's just first draw propane 1 2 3 so this is propane and 2 chloro that means on second carbon Cl group is attached right so do we have a chiral carbon present here let's just first draw all the hydrogen atoms CH3 CH3 and CH and if you just look at these carbon atoms this carbon is attached to three hydrogen so obviously this is not optically active or this is not a chiral carbon this one is also not a chiral carbon because this is attached to three hydrogens as well now this carbon is attached to a hydrogen a chlorine but on both left and right side it is attached to CH3 so that means this is not the option this is not optically uh, this compound will not show optical isomerism now the next compound is 1 2 dichloropropane first draw propane 1 2 3 now 1 2 dichloropropane that means on first carbon we have a Cl and on second carbon we have a Cl 1 2 dichloropropane now this carbon would have two hydrogen atoms because this is all already making two hydrogen uh, two bonds and this carbon would have one hydrogen atom three hydrogens with this carbon now do we have a chiral carbon present here obviously this one is not a chiral carbon because this is attached to two hydrogens this will also not be a chiral center because this is attached to three hydrogens 
now if you look at this carbon it is attached to one hydrogen a CH3 group a Cl and a CH2 Cl on this side so this carbon is chiral because it is attached to four different groups and if you are unable to visualize it let me just draw it in a better way this central this is the central carbon it is attached to hydrogen at the top on the right side it has a CH3 group at the bottom a Cl and on the left hand side it has a CH2 Cl group right so these are four different groups Cl CH2 on the left a hydrogen at the top CH3 on the right and Cl the and Cl at the bottom so that means this carbon is optically active so the option would be B 1 2 dichloropropane but let's just draw the other two as well uh, so that we clearly know that yes this is option B in paper obviously you don't have to solve the other two if you know uh, that you have done it correctly and you know that yes B is the correct option then you don't have to waste your time on C and D but here as we are just learning the concepts so let's just uh, draw C and D as well so 1 3 dichloropropane now what would be 1 3 first let me raise these things all right so 1 3 dichloropropane so that means again we have to draw three carbons now 1 3 means a chlorine on first carbon and a chlorine on third carbon right so 1 3 dichloropropane that means it, this carbon would have two hydrogens this carbon would have two hydrogens and this carbon would have one hydrogen or rather two hydrogen right so you can now see that this carbon is attached to two hydrogen atoms so obviously this is not a chiral center and this carbon is also attached to two hydrogen atoms so this can also not be a chiral center and this is also having two hydrogens so this is not a chiral center as well so one three dichloropropane is not will not show optical isomerism the last option is two two dichloropropane one two three now two two dichloropropane means both the chlorine atoms are on the second carbon so this is two two dichloropropane that means three hydrogens on this carbon and three hydrogens on this carbon and you can see that none of the carbon atoms in this structure as well is chiral because this carbon is attached to three hydrogens this carbon is attached to three hydrogens and this carbon is attached to two chlorine and ch3 on both left and right side so definitely option b is the correct option this will show optical isomerism now here is a tricky question uh, this question most of my students have sent me this question and yes obviously this one is real tricky and you have to ponder over this one right so in this question they're saying that in 1865 calculus suggested a ring structure for benzene now, benzene you will study it in detail in a2 uh, in which a hydrogen atom is attached to each carbon atom they have given us this structure of benzene in which we have six carbon atoms you can count them uh, we have six carbon atoms one two three four five six each carbon is that atom is attached to a hydrogen atom and you can see that uh, there are alternating double bonds a double bond then a single bond then a double bond and a single bond right so the carbon atoms are attached to each other through alternating double bonds so calculate give this a structure in 1865 and in this structure all of the bonds remain in the places shown so that means that bonds are fixed on their positions these double bonds and single bonds they are not moving in the structure of the, uh, all of the bonds remain in the places shown assuming this is the structure of benzene and this is not the actual structure of benzene we will study it in a2 how many isomers of dichlorobenzene would exist now they have given us the structure of benzene c6h6 and they are talking about c6h4 cl2 dichlorobenzene that means two of the hydrogen atoms are replaced by chlorine right two of the hydrogen atoms are replaced by chlorine and then we have to tell that how many isomers of dichlorobenzene would exist 
and options are our options are three four five and six so first we have to convert this structure into dichlorobenzene so let's just think that uh, the hydrogen from this side will gone and we have so this is uh, the substitution reaction of alkane so now we have a cl on this carbon right and the other chlorine you now you have to think that uh, other chlorine the other the second chlorine uh, it will occupy which position so let's just suppose that let's just say this hydrogen would be gone and the other chlorine is attached to this one so this is one two dichloro uh, benzene right this is one two dichloro benzene now all right so this is one two dichloro benzene and let's just now think what if the second chlorine instead of attaching it to this carbon let's just say if we attach this chlorine to this carbon is there any difference again this is one two dichlorobenzene but yes there is a difference because if you see uh, right now both the chlorine are attached to the carbons which are double bonded to each other right both the chlorine atoms are attached to those carbons which are double bonded to each other and in the previous structure in the previous structure what we have done in the previous structure was that the chlorine was attached to this carbon and these two carbon atoms were single bonded to each other so this is a structural difference as they have told us this thing that the bonds will remain in the places shown so that means this is a structural difference in one we have drawn one two di chloro benzene right but there are two structural isomers of one two di chloro benzene in one of the structure both the chlorines are attached to single bonded carbon atoms in the other structure both the chlorines are attached to double bonded carbon atoms so i hope you get this point so this is a structural difference right so these are two isomers not one so one two dichloropropane this would be two isomer there will be two isomers from one two dichlorobenzene in one structure both the chlorine atoms are attached to single bonded carbon atoms in the other one both the chlorines are attached to the double bonded carbon atoms right so two isomers from one two dichlorobenzene now let's first erase all this data now what if we attach chlorine to this carbon so now this is 1 2 3 1 3 dichlorobenzene right and yes there is another possibility for 1 2 dichlorobenzene as well if we attach the second chlorine to this carbon atom again this is 1 2 3 1 3 dichlorobenzene and you would arguably say that this is again a third a fourth structure but no these two are same if you look at these two structures uh, in both the cases the this is carbon number 1 this is carbon number 3 which is double bonded to one side to one carbon and single bonded to one carbon and if you see on the other side this one is carbon number 1 this is carbon number 1 and this is carbon number 3 again this carbon is connected to a double bonded d connected to one carbon and single bonded d connected to other carbon same goes for this carbon this carbon this is carbon number 1 and carbon number 3 is double bonded to this carbon and single bonded to this carbon so environment is completely same right so uh, it doesn't matter whether you uh, attach chlorine on this side or you attach chlorine on this side they both are same structures so this is one three dichlorobenzene so one three dichlorobenzene it will only be one structure not two one two dichlorobenzene were two structures but one three dichlorobenzene is only one structure and last would be one four if we attach the second chlorine on this carbon then it would be one two three four and yes there is only one structure for 14 dichlorobenzene so that means we have 212 dichlorobenzene 113 dichlorobenzene and 114 dichlorobenzene 
So in total, there are total four isomers. So that means the answer would be B. All right. So this is again question from chiral carbons, optical isomerism, a very simple question. They're saying that uh, the diagram shows the structure of vitamin A. So this is the structure of vitamin A. All right. And they're asking that how many chiral centers are present in one vitamin A molecule. They have given us the skeletal formula of vitamin A and we have to find out the chiral centers. Now, while finding the chiral centers, just remember one thing. You only, you don't need to look at the sp2 carbon atoms, the carbons which are sp2 hybridized. And how to identify which one is sp2 hybridized, which is only attached to uh, three, uh, or you can say that which is making a double bond, like this carbon. This carbon is making a double bond, that means it is sp2 hybridized. This carbon is making a double bond, that means it is sp2 hybridized. Uh, sp2 hy sp2 uh, hybridized carbon atoms, they have only three electron pairs around them, right? Uh, hopefully, I will make a video on hybridization as well. But in this question, you can just simply remember this thing that if a carbon is making double bond, that means it is sp2 hybridized. So this is sp2 hybridized, this is sp2 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 hybridized sp2 hybridized so these green ones they're all sp2 hybridized and uh, they will not be chiral center they will never be chiral centers because they are only attached to three different groups maximum they can be attached to three different groups right so for chirality an atom must have to be attached to four different groups so that means an sp2 carbon can never be a chiral center so we only have to look for sp3 carbon atoms which have four and only those sp3 carbons where four different bonds or three bonds are shown like this carbon uh, let's just draw it with another color so this carbon uh, two bonds are shown that means the other two are hydrogen and if only two bonds are shown that means the other two are hydrogen so that would also not be a chiral center right like this one only two bonds are shown this one only two bonds are shown this one only two bonds are shown so they are not chiral centers because uh, they all have two hydrogen atoms attached to it two bonds means the rest of the two atoms are hydrogens attached to them so these are not chiral centers as well right so and obviously these CH3s, they can never be chiral centers because they have three hydrogens attached to them. Now the only carbon which left, the only sp3 carbon which left in this structure, which could be or which can be a chiral center is this one, right? All the four bonds are shown. So if an sp3 carbon in a skeletal structure, if all the four bonds are shown, if three bonds are shown, then there are chances that it could be uh, a chiral center you have to look for it obviously so this carbon it could be a chiral center let's just find out but uh, you can see that two ch3 groups are attached to this carbon so there is no need to uh, solve it further obviously this is not a chiral center so that means there is no chiral center present in this structure there are zero chiral centers so option a is the answer